I used to blame myself. I used to blame myself. I went through years, man, blaming myself because I went to that party with them. Puff said, yo, Gene, you ain't got to go. I said, man, somebody going to kill us tonight. I sat at a table and told all the guys that was around her, they coming to kill us tonight. And D Max said, yo, we lock and load together. We lock and load together. I don't see nobody locking and loading nothing. I went to Puff prior to telling those guys. I went up there, Puff sat at the top of the steps. I'm looking up at Puff. Mm-hmm. I said, yo, Puff, I got some intel. He said, what's up, G? Kim come right on the side of him. She's in a white robe. Puff is in a white robe. His wife robe says BH, because he had took it from Beverly Hills Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to him, I said, yo, my man, I'm looking at him, I said, my man, I got some intel. These guys are coming to kill us tonight at the party. Yo, Gene, you ain't got to go. I'm the only one that got, I'm the only one that got it with them. You know what I mean? I'm the only one that could distribute it if I need to. But you tell me I don't have to go? I felt that small. I go in, I call my man, Slick. Shay pick up the phone, Sean pick up the phone from the block. Cause back in New York City, we used to have pay phones. So I use Andre Harrell number. If you go by his number on that day, you'll see I called uh, 12th Street. Cause that's a phone record, it's still there. You understand? That would be as long as they got phone records, they could go back and look at Andre Harrell house number and see on March the 8th before March 9th, I called 112th Street and 8th Avenue payphone. I said, yo, Slick, I spoke to certain people. They told me that these guys are coming to kill us tonight. He said, I said, yo, Puff said I ain't got to go. Slick a gangster. He said, don't go there. Fuck them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, I can't do them kids like that. I can't do these kids like that, man. He said, yo, man, listen here, all I'm saying, if something happened to you, he gonna have somebody to answer to when he get back here. He said, yo, listen here. Slick told me always, you know, failure to prepare is preparing to fail, don't nothing be the ambush. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail, don't nothing be the ambush. That means keep your head on the swivel. See, that night then, see when he's telling you not to be there, could he have potentially been involved? Like I said, if you set up an atmosphere, you're just as much as wrong. It's crazy how we come out of party, we used to jump in the car, we gone. We waited. We waited. But see, when I spoke to the FBI, and I spoke to people. They led me to believe that there were more than one or two people that was trying to kill us out there that night. Those those guys who wanted, see, I believe it was those guys who wanted to get back at Big for that ambush over in Red Hook when their van got shot up. Because those are the guys who told Mace that Puff and Big had to worry about something. So Puff may have made a phone call to them. You understand? Saying, yo, listen here, man. I ain't have shit to do with that shit that happened in Red Hook. Big gonna be at the party. Y'all could talk to him then. He could have done that. Because Mace didn't come to the party either. But Mace knew about that because Mace told me about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The guys he played ball with, they were the Crips and stuff like that. I think they were um, those guys called uh, the Dog Pound. Right. So they have told Mace, you good, Mace, but Puff and Big ain't. So I know Mace told Puff. Mace didn't tell Big. You understand? So I know what Puff is going to do. 
he's going to make a phone call to those guys and say, yo, man, listen here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to exonerate myself. I ain't had shit to do with that. You hear me? We go into this party, the party that I tried to talk about the going, the vibe party. Now, I blamed myself for years, as I said, until I heard the president of Motown, the former president of Motown, or vice president of Motown, Clark Kent, and Un Rivera, Biggie's partner, say these things. Un Rivera said, I had called Karen Hunter and I think Janet Jackamy. They was gonna meet Big to the hotel before he went to London. Supposed to be going to London, your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. He, they were supposed to be meeting him. Clark Kent said, I was in Biggs Hotel and I asked him, what are you doing tonight? He said, I'm going to this party that D-Rock, his man, and Puff set, me, set up for me to go. He told Clark Kent that. Clark Kent on the Art of Dialogue said that shit. Yo, when Clark Kent said that shit, my man, all the pain that I had inside me, everything that fucked me up for years, because that kid died there, all that shit came out of me. I used to blame my fucking self. Do you understand what I'm saying? I used to blame myself. So when I heard Clark Kent say that, that he told Big not to go, it's nothing I could have fucking said to that kid. Because when I looked at him, I said, yo, B, they coming to kill us tonight. Little C's, he hadn't been around for a whole week. Go ahead with old cop shit, Gene. You understand? But they don't know throughout the years that the shit that was on me every time I hear this kid music, every time I because I knew God put me there. You understand? God put me there, but I had the wrong principle. I had puff. So when we got when we got to that light, instead of stopping at the light, as soon as I got in the car, Kenny, run the next three lights. Run the next three lights, Kenny. We jet through the light. The killer was right there at the light. He had just walked up to me less than five minutes prior to killing the notorious big. Do you understand? He was right there at the light part. It wasn't no drive by. Don't listen to these people. It was no drive by. The guy was parked in the car. When big stopped at the light, he pulled out the parking space. Bow, 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 bow. Turned the corner. So you were told to drive through the light? I told our driver to drive through the light. And, yo, like when I was telling uh, Steve, Steve, right? I told Steve, I said, yo, Steve, Steve said, uh, well, you have law enforcement, or is you part of the military? I said, no, uh, my job as being a New York State parole officer, we trained with a lot of agencies, different agencies. They gave courses and everything like that. And this is how good God is. Two weeks prior to going to California, I took a class called interrogation and surveillance. And in that class, we had to learn how to interrogate somebody. We had to learn how to do certain surveillance. We had to learn, and they taught us tricks where you can find out somebody following you. And in that, uh, in that course, it said, Take three lights, run three right. Make make three rights, take three lights. You understand? If you take three rights, where are you at? Back to where you started. Right where you started. And if that motherfucker car is right behind you, yeah. if that car is behind you, somebody following you. Mm -hmm. If you run three lights and that person run those same three lights that you ran, somebody's following you. 
So I just, so when I got in the car, because I wanted to ride on the side of the car. Back then, back then I'm 265. Right now I'm 320. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I wanted to ride on the side of the car with my gun out. Like as if you were fucking watching the president? Yeah. I would have been the first one to have been shot. But everything you've said, Gene, even listening to your story, you talk about the college night. You said people are going to die. You said to big somebody's going to die. Did you have a Did you have a feeling? As, are you connected to something where you feel that something's going to go wrong, or do you always think that way? Nothing be the ambush, bro. And I don't always think that way. That's so it wasn't that's paranoia, not my life. like you're saying that shit every day. Where eventually you're going to get one out of every hundred, right? If you have people with street knowledge and gangsters. Chas told me, yo, they coming at y'all. You understand? The dude from that was hanging with Jodeci. Yo, we ain't going to the party, bro. It's going to be some bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? It don't take a rocket scientist. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. To see something and know that something's going to happen. And it's a possibility. Why wasn't he more protected? Because Puff wouldn't pay for security. I told Kirk Burroughs, man, we need more security, bro. How the hell you just got me, Kenny, for Puff, and you got Paul and somebody for Big, but all of them, they got entourage, they got other people. Come on, bro. See when Biggie, Four people. See when Biggie dies, does that enhance Puff's stock with the, 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 the rights he's got from Biggie's music? Oh, come on. So 10 million. He sold ten million. Big got like seven million out of a uh, ten million album. Yo, if you sell ten million albums, right, that's about twenty two hundred million dollars, hundred eighty million dollars, something like that. You know, you, you know what I mean? Because the Michael Jackson thing as well. Because I think Sony owed him over a billion in his rights, and he had the Beatles rights. I think he had Eminem's rights. Obviously, he can get a conspiracy theories, but if he's gone. They get the rights back. Right. You're talk people kill each other for fucking ten dollars. Right. Never mind a hundred million, a billion. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no. Uh, man, Michael Jackson was. We know that dude was paid to murk him. No, allegedly. I God said allegedly, but there's no way, man. That doctor don't know what he's doing, and Michael Jackson just go up and just die like that, man. He on he. Not only that, what about the Marvel thing? He had made the deals were making a deal with Marvel Comic. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of stuff that was going on with Michael Jack. Yeah. yeah. Does it do you question a lot? Because that life it seems glamorous, but I interview enough people now to realize how fucked up it was, and no trust, no love. Everybody's out for themselves. Everybody would fuck you over. Everybody would fuck your women. Like, like what the fuck is that all about? But now that's their, that's the mentality. That's what that game is about. You understand? I used to see Puff run through so many girls, but if he ain't had a dime, he wouldn't be able to do that. I used to see him run through dudes that he was smiling their face and then F their girls. That's not a nice person. I don't think about a nice person, but that's not. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. <laughs> it's just really. a fucked up dude. Yeah, man. that's not loyalty. Yeah. There's no. Love there, they just seems yeah. fucked up. And then the woman is fucked up as well. <laughs> yeah. So you were there when Biggie gets shot, what happens then? Um, me and Tone jump in the car and we chase, try to chase the driver, but we couldn't get close enough to do anything. So I said, Tone, let's go back and set up a, a I said, Tone, we gotta get back. You know what I'm saying? So we could set up, well, when the pop cops come, they could take Big to the hospital, whatever like that. So when we get back, uh, Puff was like, yo, Kenny, you know where the hospital at? And Kenny said yes, and we drive Big to the hospital. Because you had them in your arms, is that correct? Yeah, that's when we got them to the hospital. When we got them to the hospital, uh, which it took us a long time to get there, man. I don't know, shit. He took a half an hour to get to some place that was actually two blocks away. 
and Kenny's from California, so he'd never been asked about that one. Uh, seen the sideline, I think it was two blocks away, and we went someplace else or vice versa. It was a hospital two blocks away, and we end up going, you know, about a half an hour away from the scene. Was he still alive at that moment? Well, I don't know. Uh, the last thing I heard Big say was just do it. Kenny said, I'm going to get you to the hospital, Big. And Big said, just do it. And then I told people, don't let them go to sleep. Whatever you do, don't let them go to sleep. Keep them up. Don't let them go to sleep. When we got to the hospital, we somebody ran into the hospital. They got a gurney, and we pulled them out. And when we pulled out the, pulled the body out, that's when I seen his pants was uh, saturated, appeared to be urine, and I could smell uh, the feces. And I just, when I was grabbed him, and then I just dropped his leg. And they looked at me, they said, yo, Gene. And I was like, and I just grabbed him up, and we put him on the gurney. You know, that was like 400 pounds of dead weight, man. So put him up on the gurney, and then they rolled him in there, and Paul looked at me. I said, yo, man, that nigga dead. Excuse me. I said, yo, that brother's dead. And he said, uh, no, nah, he just, it was shock, Gene. It was shock, bro. You know, he was just shocked. He just been shot. He ain't dead. I said, bro, he dead. He pissed the shit on himself. And then uh, started getting phone calls from everywhere. I'm making phone calls.